What's going on, family? I know this is a live, but I'm just talking to y'all straight like it's just a video. But, um, all right, let's get straight into it. So, I'm reading Message to the Millennials by Brother Riza Islam. And he's talking about uh, social media, right? And I want to highlight how... Well, I'm going to just be jumping from point to point uh, from paragraphs of uh, of this book, right? What's going on, John? What's going on, fam? All right, so I'm going to be jumping from paragraph to paragraph in this book of Message to the Millennials, right? So he spoke on how we all know the so-called terrorist attack that happened in the beginning of the 2000s, 2001, right? Uh, 9-11. So he spoke on how 9-11 brought into life um, this Patriot Act. Now, the Patriot Act is an acronym for... Um, Providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act. The Patriot Act is an acronym for that. So after 2001, it, it was passed October 2001, right after 9-11 happened, right? So after that, we had all of these social media platforms coming out. Uh, really in 1997, it was Friendster before uh, 9-11, but all of these social media platforms came out. Um, you know, we got Twitter, MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of these, you know, platforms came out and it was a way for humans to peer to peer communicate with each other, somewhat decentralized, so-called peer to peer. Right. And what you hear now is or in, in the crypto world is peer to peer payment system. When when so-called Satoshi Nakamoto came out with the Bitcoin white paper, he, he said, I've came out with the peer to peer payment system. Now, social media is peer to peer today, as we see it now. And basically, this Patriot Act, uh, it, it gave it brought out tools that, that Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everything are the tools of this Patriot Act, where it says providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act to sum it up is to get surveillance on the masses of the people you feel what i'm saying so um what i want to talk about with with crypto and how crypto isn't decentralized that is a big myth crypto is more distributed than decentralized it's more distributed to everybody on the network and it's like we're blatantly showing you all of the transactions it's like we're showing you what we're seeing, but we also see too. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can see it. Click the link in the description to get ten dollars worth of free Bitcoin on Coinbase whenever you invest a hundred dollars into any cryptocurrency on Coinbase. But we just want to put it in your face that we see it too, that we can transact or, or we can see all of these transactions. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, I want to go later in the book where he said, "This, this is why I'm saying is it's uh." None of it is decentralized because it's all connected into the microchips within our phone. So he said, uh, don't get caught up in the fiction of this thing that we call social media. Don't get caught up in the fantasy. Don't get caught up in giving yourself freely by posting every damn type of emotion you have. Posting every argument you have. Posting every situation that occurs when it does not truly give a benefit to anyone. But the same system that benefits off of your deg degradation. Simply be mindful because the reality is much different. Then he goes on to say, okay, now what is the reality and what is the fact? The fact is that everything that we post, everything that we comment on, everything that we say and do on video and audio as it pertains to not only social media, but to our phone calls, our text messages, our emails, everything that we transfer through our cellular device, through our smart tablets, through our computers and every electronic with a microchip is indeed recorded. Now, when we talk about crypto and this decentralization stuff, they it, it's all software, but this software cannot exist without hardware. And this hardware has things like microchips within it, which is our phones, our computers. They all have microchips. So I'm just looking to demystify this whole decentralized thing this whole peer-to-peer -peer thing crypto is just social media but with payments and now we saw what's his name um uh 
Jack Dorsey. He let he stepped down as Twitter CEO, which is a peer-to-peer communication social media platform. It's it's more of a centralized peer-to-peer, you know, type of platform. And uh, he stepped down. He started working more on Square. And then it came out that he turned or they're rebranding Square into Block, which is blockchain. And he's going to be focusing more on financial technology, which is peer-to-peer payment systems. So I'm just looking to highlight that if you ever hear somebody say, this is decentralized. It's not controlled by one central central authority. It's a half truth. It's partial truth. It's like, yeah, this this uh, project or this crypto is ran off of code base. But you got to think there was also a central group or a central power who integrated these autonomous codes to make this thing work, who integrated these uh, programs and have constructed this program themselves based on, you know, whatever they saw fit. Um, so I'm just saying, if you ever hear of decentralized anything in this crypto stuff, it's a partial truth to it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not all of, of what it really may seem. And I'm just here to say, hey, look, when looking at specifically crypto, because I talk more on crypto, when looking at crypto specifically, just look at the use case and that's how you see the value. Like where you saw or the use case and also supply and demand, things like that, because supply and demand, is it uh, it uh, shows scarcity within a, a project. So let's say, for example, the U.S. dollar, they've printed a lot of money in 2020, which means it's devaluing the dollar, which means other currencies or, or other um, goods are becoming more. It's not that other goods are becoming more value valuable the dollar is becoming devalued so look at these projects like hey how can i use this like how if somebody were to look at facebook back in the day how can i use um facebook is is facebook a good like look at it like a business is good is facebook a good business is youtube a good business like is bitcoin a good business does it have a, a good supply to uh or current supply to max supply ratio. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to look at it like that and not think, oh, it's private. Uh, I can do these transactions. I can scam. It does make it easier to scam and stuff like that because there's no real like regulation behind it. But don't look at it like you can just get away with anything because you can't. We are constantly being monitored every single day. And it's through these phones that have more information on us than we have on ourselves. It's a smartphone because it knows everything about us and we don't really know everything about ourselves. It just it's just smarter than us. So, yeah, you you really got to see the, the play on words, too, with these types of things. So that's all I really wanted to get into is it's a it's a, a big myth. He said that makes more sense now. This is why Albert always talks about seeing who is behind the projects of crypto. Exactly. And now we see him with um, Bitcoin. They're talking about. This Craig Wright guy, he's in a whole uh, case of uh, um, they're saying he, Craig Wright is trying to say he, that he created Bitcoin and all of this types of thing. I don't even I don't think Craig Wright uh, made Bitcoin. I don't think the two dudes that are claiming that he made Bitcoin made Bitcoin. I, I, I honestly, from my research, I'm saying the NSA made Bitcoin. Uh, the government made Bitcoin to have global surveillance on the whole population and global control. Because if everybody in the world adopts Bitcoin or crypto, they now have the, have the ability to pinpoint your data. It's, it's not less more so about who you are talking or, or let me not say that. It's about your metadata. And if they have data on your transactions, they can see what you've been doing, when you've done it. How you've done it and with whom it don't it don't really matter is more so about your data you know what i'm saying and it does matter about who makes these projects and it, it's like you look at who makes these projects it's like oh that's the founder oh um right now tim cook is the ceo of apple or you know hmm, the deep web may have some of those answers yeah I, i'm sure they have some of those answers but honestly i ain't trying to access the deep web right now but uh, hey, 
I knew it was something up with it. I'm not saying that it's totally bad. It's still value in these crypto assets. But yeah, I just wanted to demystify that because that is not true. Whenever you hear somebody on YouTube saying, oh, it's decentralized, this and that, that's just a sales pitch. That's a sales pitch to get you to draw more in to thinking that you have more freedom to transact as you can and, and you know, move freely. He says, but that requires the Tor browser, the VPNs and all of that. Yeah, all of that types of stuff. And, and you know, that's that's honestly doing too much because yeah the the crypto gurus exactly the crypto gurus it's is literally just a sales pitch to reel you in and they're trying to hype up something so i just wanted to demystify that it's it's really something that hasn't been told already by people like edward snowden and those type of guys and but yeah rizza islam he just i just had to go back and resource some information because i was just catching on like and when you look at the bitcoin white paper or let me not say the well yeah it's in the white paper when you look at the code and you start learning more about it you will find out that the NSA has a lot of they've already been on it for decades i'm talking about 2 3 decades they've already been in on the algorithms the coding and stuff like that so i'm under the impression that the NSA is behind all of this honestly we've lost privacy a long time ago with these social media apps so it doesn't really matter you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not saying something that's so new. I'm just saying, don't get caught up in the lie and the deception that crypto is decentralized because I did too. That was the sales pitch that I got brung or that I got reeled into with crypto. But I just see the value in investing in it. You're basically investing into lines of code. You're investing, investing into code projects, coding algorithms autonomous um, algorithms, basically things that are going to bring AI into place, things that are going to bring, bring in robots into place. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm just telling y'all so you don't get caught up in the deception that is being told out here on with these, as, as John said, these crypto gurus and stuff like that. So yeah, still value in it. And yeah, the only way to get around the control and the, and the surveillance of it is seek refuge in the God. Yo, God, whoever you see as the higher being, the higher power to to move around and, and you know, maneuver. Up, I said maneuver and to maneuver within these uh these uh surveillance tactics and stuff like that. You just got to look, look within, look at your look, look to your God, man, because the powers that be only only God can can really bring them down I'm telling you and even though God is within that I know there's a there's a actual one God who can take it all down but yeah that's really all I had to say uh, I'm not gonna be on here too long too much longer so yeah I'll catch y'all later just hope that was some value valuable information for y'all so um yeah